Hi, my name is John and this is Business Focus. In today's video, we'll be talking about uh, all about integer linear programming. So let's get started. And we're back. In today's video, we'll be talking primarily all about integer linear programming. Now, what is it all about and what are its components and how do we... There's an example that we will uh, utilize later on to illustrate how integer linear programming can be utilized. So, integer linear programming is a variation of your linear programming variant, so to speak. Now, in my previous video, talking about how to find the optimal solution, you can check it out. Uh, to learn more about linear programming now in particular another variant which is integer linear programming focuses on a specific outcome adding a particular or a, a, another constraint so to speak and when you say integer the outcome or your or for your optimal solution has to be integer by nature when you say integer it has to be whole number whole numbers so cannot be fractional now obviously it depends on certain scenarios that this is applied especially for production uh, for uh, construction of houses, it cannot be fractional, right? It cannot be 1.5, 1.2. has to be whole units, either 1, 2 units, 3 units, and so forth. Now, in terms of integer linear programming, there are four varieties that we have here. Now, we'll focus more on the first one today. So, do check out uh, uh, for future videos regarding other integer LP. So the first one is you have the old integer LP variety where it has uh, specifically requires that all your optimal outcome or solution has to be integer by nature. So whole numbers as mentioned earlier. Now uh, a second variety is called a mixed integer LP which it, in, it has a combination of a regular LP and an integer LP of sorts. And then third is we have the binary integer LP which specifically requires that the output has to be integer as well as binary so meaning binary is ones and zeros either yes or no pass or fail of that nature here and the fourth type here is we have is LP relaxation so it's similar to how a regular LP looks like here so less of a restrictions for the integer type here now we have an example here to better illustrate our, our scenario here so for the integer LP in particular so here we have a sample problem here focusing on uh, the the premise here is that you're an investor here or you're, you have a business that you want to invest on different types of real estate so whether to maximize your uh, investment here now in this case you're given two choices here to invest upon whether condominium versus a townhouse here and the objective is to maximize your returns or your cash flow and there are certain limitations and one of the key steps in linear programming is constructing the objectives and constraints first and secondarily is constructing the spreadsheet model or the template that you're going to incorporate so you can plug in those uh, objectives constraints so that excel can try and find the optimal solution so let's take a closer look here so here is our example here so the first part here is formulating the objectives and constraint. Now, if you have difficulty uh, formulating the constraints here, uh, leave your comments down below to, to suggest that uh, maybe I could create another video to, to give you an idea how to formulate it uh, effectively and efficiently. But anyway, one, the assumption is you've already constructed the objectives and constraint here. Now, in order to do that effectively, uh, you need to define the variables per se. Because if you were to just follow the, the variables given, in this case, townhouse and condominium, can be laborious because the words is very long. And every time you create a formula, it has to be uh, implemented or illustrated there. So it could take up a lot of space. So, so to expedite the process, we define the variables here. So let T represents for townhouse and then C for condominium. So use the first letter so, so it's easier here. Now for our objective here is to maximize the return here. So meaning for every townhouse that you invest upon or in, you generate $10,000 here. And then for every condominium that you invest in, you generate $15,000 in return. So that's just the objectives here. And then based on the constraints or subject two, we have four constraints here. So for the first constraint, so labeling your constraint is important. So don't forget that. 
Uh, the first one is regarding the funds availability. So in order to invest in those types of real estate, uh, you're given two choices and those investments uh, has a corresponding cost. So you have a maximum of $2 million to invest in. And then for every townhouse that you invest on, it costs you $250,000. For the condominium, it's $350,000. So you're trying to find the right mix here. More of townhouse or condominium or both here. So we'll find out later on. Now, a second constraint apart from the funds is who's going to manage those uh, properties. So you have a manager here. Uh, there's a availability of time in terms of hours. So the maximum allotted time is 140 hours. That could be a, a week or even a month here, depending on the time frame. And then the time that you allot for townhouse is four hours only. And then for condominium, it's 40 hours since, you know, obviously a condominium, you know, you have a high sky rise and lots of units to, to check upon. Anyway, so these are the two primary constraints that was given in the problem. Now, there could be more, could be less. But anyway, so typically in a linear LP, you add a third constraint, which is the non-negativity here, right? So since we're focusing now on the integer here or integer problem, so we want to create uh, uh, additional or add an additional constraint, which is adding a constraint that the outcome for your uh, townhouse and condominiums uh, result not only has to be non-negative, but it has to be integer by nature, meaning whole number. So once you have done that, okay, uh, you now can go on to the next step, which is create the spreadsheet model. Now take note, uh, creating the objectives and constraint is critical because this will be your guide later on once you're plugging in the objectives and constraint in your Excel solver. So if you uh, input it incorrectly or you wrote it in incorrectly, the inequality or the values here, you'll get a different result, which is kind of scary if you think about it because uh, linear programming will give you an answer whether it's right or wrong based on the inputs that you have provided So let's go to the next step here So the next part now here is uh, how do you formulate uh, the template here so to speak So let's create a table here Okay, so obviously the Creating the spreadsheet model there are two components the parameter the givens and the inputs of the variables and the model where the computation is where you're trying to find the optimal solution here so for the parameter, I've created already the template here for this particular problem. So we have to input majority of all of the objectives and constraints here. So let's start first with the objectives here. So the objective is to maximize uh, the cash flow here, right? So in this case, you've created columns for townhouse and condominium, right? So the cash flow you generate for every townhouse you invest in is 10,000. So that's 10. And then for condominium, that's 15, right? So this deals with that one. Now for the first constraint, so let's take a look here. So for the left hand side, for the funds availability, so each type of uh, real estate costs a certain amount. So for townhouse, the price is 250,000. Take note, I put uh, zeros in the labeling so it would be understood it's not 250, it's 250,000. Now for condo or condominium, it's 250. For the second constraint here is the manager's at time availability here. So it's four hours and 40. So you just have to copy it. Okay. Now that's dealing with the left hand side. Now the right hand side, we have to include that also in our parameter. So as you may notice, the funds availability at most is $2 million here. So funds availability for both types of uh, real estate properties is $2 uh, million. So that's 2000 and then for the manager's availability, it's 140. So let's copy that. So once we're done with that, we can now create the model part here. So obviously one of the primary objectives is to maximize the investments here. So you need to create uh, blanks to fill in later on. So uh, you need to determine how many or how much are you going to invest in the particular townhouse or condominium here and identify the uh, cash flow or return that you're going to get based on your investment here So the formula you're going to put here. It's very simple as same as the other video You're going to use the sum product formula here, right? As you can see here you multiply And then you add them both. That's why it's called sum product. So use sum product You sum product any any of the arrays will does not matter whichever goes first so you sum product the townhouse and condominium for the purchase plan in your model 
Then Kama. Take note, you've selected two cells here, so the second array should be two cells as well. It cannot be one cell here, two cells here, or three cells there, and it, it's it's not matched. So for the second array, we're going to select the cash flow. Again, two cells here. So we're trying to find out how many townhouse or condominiums are we going to uh, invest here and how, how much is the cost here. So obviously we haven't selected here. So if you see here, if you purchase one townhouse and one condominium, it's going to generate $25,000 here. So let's start again. So once you've done that, obviously you need to create a third one here at the bottom, which is to identify if you have violated any of the constraints here, if you had exceeded the funds availability and your uh, manager's time availability here. So to copy the availability for the funds, we simply copy the one in the parameter. And the, for, for the funds, time uh, funding time availability, just copy the manager's time, which is 140. Okay, so next now here is we need to incorporate a sum product formula still to find out if it did exceeded or not. So we use the sum product feature or function. Again, we select the first array, the townhouse condo, comma. In this case, we're going to use the price for the townhouse and condo in the parameter. Okay. And then we do the same for the funds. So sum product first array and then for the second array is the time for the townhouse and the condo here so obviously you can see here that uh, since you uh, there's no values in the townhouse purchase plan so there is no utilization of the fund so this is where in the exo solver comes in here so let's go to data tabs select solver okay so for the objective, we select the cash flow, which has the sum product formula. And then let's take a look now. So for our objectives and constraint, we just have to follow the guide or our cheat sheet in our objectives constraint that the, the one we created earlier. So it says it's maximization, so it's correct. And then by changing the variable cell, so uh, we select the purchase plan for townhouse and condominium. So we're trying to find out. Okay, now here's the here's the key part. So if you've done it properly, the, the formulation of your constraints, you just have to plug it in as is and count the number of constraints. So we have four. And if you have four in your constraints, then you've done your part. So whatever the outcome is, uh, hopefully it's the correct one. Anyway, so let's follow. So we add. So if you notice the left-hand side, the inequality and the right-hand side. So if you notice here, the sum product of your cost and the, the types of real estate. And if you notice, you did that here. You have a formula for that one. And then the constraint here is less than equal. So it's the same. So the constraint is 2,000. So we select 2,000. So that's the first one. The second one is the same. So it's the manager's time availability. So we sum product this also. So we select this one. And then the inequality is still less than equal. Then for the constraint, it's 140. So we select 140 here. So that's two. Since the non-negativity is in the in the main te template or window, so we'll skip that one first and see here. So since we need to incorporate the integer part here, okay, so we need to add another one, okay. So it's the same. So select the townhouse and condo, and then select the middle part or the inequality instead of the inequality. You just select integer here, and then select OK. So you may notice you only have three here and make sure you double check that you have in encoded all four constraints here. So you need four. So make sure you check the box here for the non-negativity. Once you have done that, make sure it's selecting the simplex LP for the solving method. Once you have done that, simply select solve. And if you've done everything properly, then you should find the optimal solution here. And we were able to find it. So based on the... Uh, solver, uh, it, wa he, it was able to find that uh, buying five townhouses and two condominiums, which is u whole units, so there's no fractional here, and the cash flow amount here is 80,000 here. Now, to double check if you have violated any of the constraints here, so let's take a look. So, for the funds availability, we did not exceed the available funds, so that's one. Uh, for the second one, is the time for the manager, it did not exceed as well. And then for the third constraint, is it non-negative? Yes, it is. And is it an integer outcome? 
Yes, it is. So you meet all four criteria here. So meaning their answer is correct here. Now, obviously, getting this would be easy once you get used to it. But the key part here is understanding the result of the uh, optimal solution here. And one thing to note here, so as an added bonus on our discussion here. So if you were to notice, uh, the value for the integer is 80,000, right? So if we were to remove the integer, you will notice a different result here. And let me delete this one. Okay, and let's resolve it again. So if you notice here, for the non-integer non LP or just regular LP, it's 18.14. So this is regular LP, this is integer LP. So you can clearly see here that the results, simply by adding that uh, additional constraint, yielded a lower outcome here. And obviously, in reality, you know, if you're dealing with you know a whole unit here, it's impossible to have a fractional. And obviously, there's a different outcome or a different value here. So the one thing to take note of this is uh, when you're dealing with regular LP, you tend to have a higher uh, outcome or performance here versus if it's an integer, which will always have a lower threshold here. So let's put it back again. Integer. And okay. Hey, equal to, sorry. There's no constraint. There you go. And then if we were to solve it, and there we have. So you can clearly see that the outcome for integer and LP, LP will always have a higher outcome or result versus the integer which always have a lower result here. And also the key question that a decision needs to take a look at is you know doing some analysis here. Were you able to maximize your resources here and if we were to take a closer look let's take back take a look back so if you notice here uh there's still a, a an allowance of fifty thousand here which we call that as a slack this is added information here that you could use as a decision maker so knowing this how can you maximize this even the the time for the manager there's an excess of almost 40 hours or 40 hours here so meaning were you able to utilize all of it you know that's that's for another discussion so you can do some uh, a lot of simulations here how to maximize uh, use up all of the resources and ob obviously the goal here is to uh, maximize and you know generate the highest uh, cash flow or re re return for your investments here anyway uh, that I think that concludes our video for today uh, if you find this video helpful don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button also, you can leave your comments down below to suggest other topics for future videos. For more guides, tutorials, and tips, you can check out my other videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.